Welcome to the Architectural Technology Series about Materials and Construction. In this first series, titled Cast, we'll be covering concrete, in particular in situ and other concrete systems. Firstly, we need to identify what is concrete, because concrete is not cement and cement is not concrete, whereas cement is the important constituent in concrete. Now, cement as a material is usually derived from limestone, which in Queensland at least is quarried at a location called Mount Larkham, and the limestone is then produced through a system of crushing um, in the first instance to break down the larger elements down into smaller uh, particles, blended with other um, additives before it is fired um, at a very high temperature approximately 1500 degrees centigrade to make what is called clinker and then this clinker is further reduced to a cement powder which is basically cement as we know it. Now Queensland produces quite a lot of cement, about 1.7 million tonnes um, and in essence although the material is quite ancient and uh, an old technology it is very energy intensive and so of recent there's been a lot of effort into figuring out ways of making um, or reducing the embodied energy of the product through the additives and also through the efficiency of the firing. There's a wide range of different um, cements that are available. In most instances uh, general purpose Portland cement is the most commonly used and there's also a blended cement which is uh, has other additives um, to fill out the um, cement contents to reduce the total amount of cement uh, replaced with waste stream additives such as fly ash from um, power stations and so on. This fly ash content which is usually quite small about sort of 10 to 15 percent um, bulks out the, the cement and makes, makes it so that you're not using quite so much uh, virgin content. There's other specially, uh, specialist cements um, where it sets quicker um, and also more important ones like the sulphate resistant cement in certain instances where there's um, acid sulphite in the soils then you will actually have to use special concrete or cement mixtures um, in that there's also um, other cements uh, like white cements and other admixtures to sort of give different uh, uh, decorative effects. So the cement is, I guess, the key con uh, constituent um, in uh, concrete. But concrete, in essence, is a mixture of cements, uh, sand, and aggregate. Now, the aggregate is probably the largest. A constituent of, of uh, concrete and the aggregate sort of comes from uh, different uh, streams, it's either sort of quarried stone um, and it also can come from waste streams as well. Now the different um, concrete blends um, you can specify it in different strength ratings so you've got MPA 25, MPA 40, MPA 60 and MPA 120 uh, concretes. Now the most common used in domestic and, and small to medium rise um, construction is 20 to uh, 45 MPA concrete. Now the blending usually uh, occurs um, from uh, concrete suppliers. Uh, it's uh, mixed um, at the site and delivered to the sites um, in the back of uh, trucks with a large oscillating uh, barrel. Now, once we um, put all of the ingredients together, including the wa water, air, and various uh, constituents, the approximate weight of concrete is about 2,400 kilograms per meters cubed. So you can use this um, very rough, I guess, um, broad figure to help calculate, um, I guess, the weight of our structures um, based on the volume that we put into them. Now, cement itself 
or concrete rather, um, is a great material in uh, compression. Now, in tension though, it's very poor. So if it was all just evenly loaded on a perfectly flat um, base, then it would work perfectly fine. But the reality of the situation is that even on um, slab on grounds and so on, we still need to include some level of tension resistance um, and that comes in the way of reinforcing steel. Now that's either in a mesh or also in bars and it's built into the concrete um, so that the concrete material becomes a composite, um, commonly referred to as reinforced concrete. So in a very simple diagram I guess because um, most of the tension is uh, in the bottom half um, of the slab or beam. We typically place uh, the reinforcing along the, the bottom um, sector of the concrete element. Now the difference is um, for continuous um, spans which um, span across multiple points of contact like in the lower image you can see we actually get um, a reversing of the compression tension and in those instances you'll see over the tops of columns and so on um, the reinforcing mesh um, going over the on the upper layer and there will usually be some form of overlap where that um, reverse of uh, tension and compression happens inside the structure. Now the other thing um, with uh, reinforced concrete given that um, it is a composite and that the steel is an integral part of the structure, um, there is a requirement to provide a minimum cover to the steel. Now the steel that's um, put into the reinforced concrete um, is subject to corrosion and so we really do need a minimum distance, usually around about 50 millimeters, uh, to protect the steel um, from corrosion and, and to avoid um, the, the steel from breaking out from the structure um, if air and um, salts do get into it. The other um, important um, aspect of having cover over the steel is to provide fire protection. So the minimum cover required um, over the steel gives it both protection from the environment, stopping corrosion, as well as giving it a good fire resistance and ability to withstand uh, long periods um, in a sustained and hot fire without the construction falling apart. As we are saying, there's different reinforcing um, bits of steel that go into reinforced concrete. Now for large flat areas like slabs and, and pathways and so on, one of the main um, reinforcing is a mesh. Now the mesh um, can be specified in different sizes of the spacing of the vertical and horizontals and also the diameter of the steel um, that's used. So clearly sort of heavier meshes are used for more intense structural situations whereas finer meshes um, are used for more domestic applications. Now when the mesh is actually um, placed in, in uh, the structure because we have to make sure there's a minimum cover and also to ensure that it's at the right part of the structure remembering that in for a simple span we want the mesh to be on the lower part of the uh, concrete section then we do have to um, space the concrete um, away from the, um, the surface so that um, it has the proper um, structural um, activity now this is done through a whole series of proprietary um, products. You can see here some plastic chairs that are used um, to elevate the mesh in this instance of, for a simple uh, slab on ground construction. Now we use uh, different sorts of reinforcing bars or rods um, for more heavier duty construction such as um, beams um, which can be footing beams, beams in, in slabs um, and um, also columns um, to give it um, I guess adequate um, structural capacity in tension.
Now there's a whole bunch of, again, different profiles um, or deformations in the bar that are specified, as well as the thickness or diameter of the bar, strength ratings and types of steels and so on. Now typically speaking, all of the specification of the reinforcing is done um, by a structural engineer. But it's worthwhile to understand the components and how they go together because there is an impact to the design as well as being cognizant of um, checking work that's done on site to make sure that the required elements um, are all in place. Here we can see a situation where the um, reinforcing bars are tied together to form a cage uh, where there'll be some uh, beams and in this case it looks like an edge beam of a footing now the other thing that you can see is a series of um, what they call stirrups which form the the rectangle or the cage around the um, the main reinforcing steel now these stirrups are usually formed either on site or typically they're um, bent in a factory and they're tied off on site um, using thin wire what this does is that it makes sure that all of the reinforcing um, bars are in the right location to ensure uh, proper structural um, capacity and, and action when it's uh, formed into a composite construction. And you can see here in more sophisticated construction, this is uh, a more of a heavy duty construction. This is a fully welded and pre prepared. Uh, reinforcing cage, these could be columns or even um, uh, poured in piles. So, more typically in um, sort of larger and, and commercial or, or larger scale construction, a lot of the reinforcing um, is done off site and brought onto site and, and just tied into the main construction because it's a little bit more sophisticated and you really do want to get a little bit more precision in how that reinforcing is set. So that ends the first um, of the uh, cast videos. It's a very simple introduction. It's just to in, um, give you some of the nomenclature and general concepts and to give you an overview of the uh, basic constituents um, of concrete and where cement comes from. So there's another few videos in this series, so hopefully um, you'll stick around and take in the rest of them.